So having discussed uh, the perception algorithms and their functionalities in a robot or in a transferring vehicle, uh, we are now ready to discuss the localization component. Uh, so set of all algorithms that enable a robot or an autonomous vehicle to localize itself uh, in an environment, perhaps with respect to some pre-computed map, uh, we call all such algorithms the localization algorithms. Along with uh, localization algorithms are also mapping algorithms that help us to uh, compute those maps against uh, which the robot localizes itself in an environment. Uh, so, to understand the localization algorithms and their functionalities, consider these two images. So, these two images were again captured using the cameras mounted on our uh, transferring vehicle. And assume uh, that our task is to localize a vehicle in these two environments. Uh, then, one of the ways to localize a robot or a transferring vehicle in general is to perhaps use a GPS if you are in an outdoor environment. Uh, so GPS stands for Global Positioning System. So GPS localizes a vehicle globally on planet Earth. Um, but the problem with GPS is that is its error is usually in the range of 10 to 20 meters. And this may not be good enough for any uh, practical localization or, or any operation that requires high precision localization. For example, uh, the entire width of this road is less than 10 meters. Usually the width of one lane is in is around 2.75 meters if we consider this environment uh, then the entire width of the road is roughly three meters uh, so you can see that the, the the entire width of the road is much less than uh, the error in the gps based localization Furthermore, GPS is good only for outdoor uh, applications. If you, are, if you are having an indoor robotic application like industrial warehouse robots, a GPS may not even work. And that's why GPS is, is, is not a very uh, reliable localization sensor, uh, but it can provide a rough estimate as to where a robot or vehicle is on planet Earth if we are, uh, if, if we are into an outdoor uh, robotic application. Uh, so next, uh, we will consider some of the methodologies uh, that help or that enable a robot or vehicle to localize itself very precisely in an environment. So before uh, discussing uh, these methodologies, uh, let us consider a scenario uh, where our robot knew, uh, let's suppose uh, the navigation began at time t equal to zero. And at time t equal to zero, our robot perfectly knew as to where it is in the environment. Right. So at t equal to zero, the robot has perfect localization, uh, which is like uh, the, the, the perfect coordinate information as well as the orientation information as to where it is on planet Earth and with what orientation as to in what direction it is looking at. Let's assume that we have uh, perfect information at time t equal to zero. And usually we can get this information with, uh, with respect to some pre-computed map that we have already built. So with respect to that map, a pre-computed map, we perfectly know as to where we are at t equal to zero when the navigation began. Now, since at t equal to zero, we have the perfect information So at t equal to zero, we have perfect information as to where we are. Now is, and, and, and we have this information with respect to some pre-computed map. Now assume, uh, let's suppose if, if we use a GPS for localization, then as we know that GPS is a, is a global localization. So GPS provides us a rough estimate as to where we are globally. Uh, but assume that at t equal to zero, we have this perfect information. Perhaps if we can develop a mathematical framework
that can compute the movement of robot in the environment. So assume that we have some mathematical algorithm, we call this algorithm A, which, use, which uses data from different sensors. Uh, that are mounted on a transferring vehicle and it can compute the local movements of the robot very precisely or very accurately. So let's suppose our robot moved in the environment. And let's suppose our algorithm can compute these local movements very accurately. So on. So if, if, if we can compute these movements very accurately, then if we knew where we began from, then by adding up all this information, all these local movements, we can know at any time t equal to capital T as to where our robot is. Uh, and typically in real world, uh, there are some errors. I mean, we, there's, no, there's, not a, there's not any mathematical framework or algorithm that can give us the precise information, the very uh, the accurate information as to uh, how the robot moved locally. Typically, there is some very small error. We can mark it with epsilon. So there's epsilon one, epsilon two, epsilon three, so on perhaps epsilon n where n is the the time step or epsilon t right so these small errors so perhaps this is the final location of the robot but these small errors may add up and they may say that the robot went something like this But now assume that we uh, that we also have a pre-computed map. Again, we can check this map. We can perhaps identify some distinguishable features. or perhaps some landmarks in this map and using these landmarks we can know as to for let's suppose we have another algorithm b that can compute the distance let's suppose we have the following landmarks we have landmark 1 we have landmark 2 we have landmark 3 uh, we have landmark. So to, to note that these are different landmarks, we are just uh, assigning them different, uh, you know, signs. Graphically, we have these two are boxes. This is a point, this is a star. Let's suppose we have these landmarks. Now let's assume we have an algorithm B that can compute the relative position and the orientation of the robot with respect to these landmarks. Right. So adding up all these uh, local movements together and perhaps using the GPS information as well if our robot is an outdoor environment we roughly know where we are but there is going to be some error in our belief as to where we are right and this belief uh, can be made more precise by checking our our position orientation again with respect to these landmarks right and once we compute uh, and match this information uh, with respect to the landmarks that we have in the environment, uh, a part of pre-computed map, then perhaps we can much more precisely localize a robot and reduce this error. So perhaps this ellipsoid represents the localization error. So we can reduce the volume or the area of this ellipsoid. In localization so the area in 2d and volume in, in if we are doing 3d localization 
so the so 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 the metrology uh, uh, typically like how the, the question is how do we compute these local moments so typically to compute these local moments we use what we call velodometry and visual odometry Sometimes we just use wheel, uh, visual odometry rather than wheel odometry. Sometimes we just use wheel odometry instead of visual odometry. But it depends from application to application. Typically, in an autonomous driving vehicle, uh, you would use the GPS. You would use another sensor, which is known as IMU, which is stands for Inertial Measurement Unit, which also computes local moments. So GPS is global. IMU computes local moments. Wheel odometry computes local moments and visual odometry also computes local moments. So we typically fuse the information, we'll just focus on these two, visual odometry and wheel odometry, and we can just integrate IMU uh, with, with wheel odometry and then we can get a combined information. So we typically fuse the information from wheel odometry and visual odometry to get these local moments of a robot or an autonomous flying vehicle. And then at every time step, once we compute our moment, we again try to match as to where we are with respect to some pre-computed map, the landmarks in that pre-computed map. And at every time step, we can reduce the localization error. And typically after performing uh, all these operations, A and B together, we can achieve a localization error uh, roughly in the range of 10 to 20 centimeters. So the module 3 of this course uh, covers what visual odometry is and we also cover the topic of loop closure detection and the, opt and the local bundle adjustment as well as the bundle adjustment to allow, to, to, to let you know as to how to compute uh, these maps for a robot or a transferring vehicle. So next, we will provide a very brief idea as to what kind of landmark or visual features we use uh, in visual odometry or what typical landmark locations are or what these maps roughly look like uh, for at least in the context of autonomous driving. So typically in the context of autonomous driving, uh, we, uh, the maps uh, the, the, the kind of maps we use, we call them uh, high fidelity maps. So these kind of maps, they, and they store the entire 3D structure of the environment. For example, in this, uh, in, in, in this environment, perhaps uh, we have an algorithm that can detect these road boundaries. Uh, let's assume we also have an algorithm to detect these gates in for, uh, perfectly. Uh, let's assume we, we also have another algorithm that uh, can detect these trees. I mean, we can we can do this by using a lidar sensor, or we can also you know do this uh, by using images. And the, the the lidar can store the entire three D can encode the entire three D structure of the environment. And typically, images extract some key points, a uh, key you know distinguishable sort of we call them feature points or interest points uh, in, in 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 these images. So perhaps some of the interest points would be. Uh, I'm just like drawing them roughly. I mean, these may not be even accurate uh, or, or correct interest points. But typically in images, we try to extract interest points. We call them feature points of an image. Uh, and typically, if we use a LIDAR, then we can encode the entire 3D structure of the environment as to what the what the entire, entire environment 3D looks like. Uh, so typically, let's suppose we additionally have algorithms to detect these lane markers. We have algorithms to detect these gates. Uh, similarly, we have algorithms to detect these pillars. And let's suppose uh, these, you know, uh, 
small you know pavements in front of the houses uh and let's suppose we have an other gotham that detects you know these you know uh, this sort of a small region and the trees are mounted in this region so and likewise we have a, we have an algorithm with all such payments as well in front of the houses so assume that we have we have algorithm that have computed this and this information would typically store in a high priority maps as it is so all this information would be stored uh in in these kind of maps we'll just call them map for now so this map has all such information now let's assume that the vehicle navigates again in this in this environment so in that case the vehicle would again have algorithms and sensors that can detect all the things that we had detected in in the maps as well so once you detect the lane markers uh, the the road boundaries these pavements uh, the gates these pillars these trees again you can match this information the current perceptual information with the reference map that you have stored and by matching this information we can again you know use a visual metry we can use wheel odometry to compute the local moments and to minimize the error in those local moments we can iteratively match the current perceptual in information of the environment with uh, with a map that we have computed before the navigation began and this is how we reduce the error in the in in the estimation of the local moments and this is how we precisely localize a robot or a vehicle in an environment we can consider this environment as well so some of the perhaps if we are using images and and lidars combined so lidar can store the entire 3d structure of the environment and images can store you know some of the key landmark feature points perhaps all these pillars or some of the interest points in these pillars uh, and let's suppose we also have stored in a map as to what the lane markers or the road markers on these roads look like so let's assume that we have recorded the entire road as to how it looks like so the next time our vehicle navigates through this road uh, we can let's uh, suppose we have an algorithm to detect these zebra crossing assume that we also have an algorithm to to detect this divider and the markers associated with this divider and let's assume we again have algorithms to detect these lane markers again so by matching so the visual geometry and the wheel geometry would, would provide us the information about the local moment the gps will provide us a rough global uh, a rough idea as to where we are globally but to and and and, and that would provide us a localization which have a huge error right as a result of the additive errors in the visual metry and and, and wheel odometry and the and and the constant error in the gps and we can minimize these errors by again checking uh, the 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 current perceptual data uh, the the current perceptual information the current 3d representation of the world around a robot with respect to the map and the landmarks and the feature points that we have recorded in our map and this is how we reduce the error in localization for an autonomous driving vehicle or a robotic system so the module 1 of this course will cover what typical interest points there are in an image and module 3 of this course will cover the entire uh, pipeline of visual odometry so this is all about you know uh, this, uh, uh, to 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 provide you a very high level idea as to uh, what uh, localization is what visual odometry is what wheel load metry is how do we compute the local moments and how do we minimize uh, the errors in those local moments to actually globally accurately localize a vehicle or a robot in an environment with respect to some pre computed maps